Hi there, Luke Riggs, Arnold Rendering Specialist at Autodesk. And just want to quickly go back how to use the distance shader in Arnold 7.2.1.0. Okay, so I've got a cube sitting on a plane here. And on the plane, I've got a flat shader set to white. So I'm going to start off by creating a distance shader. And assign that to the color of the flat shader. We set up an IPR index, see the black and white near and far color here, so I can change the near color or the far color, like so. And we can also change the distance. To give us more control over the color, we could add a ramp RGB and insert that in between the distance shader and the flat shader. So now I can change the colors of the ramp, or I can load a preset here, and then just make sure you remember to set the ramp to custom type. So now we're getting the ramp around the cube here, based on the distance shader. Okay, so I could increase the distance value here, and you notice with the large distance values we're getting some Polaris on the corners here, so we might have to increase the number of samples. It should improve the quality. However, you should notice it uh, increases render time, so be careful with this value. Okay, so I've duplicated the cube here, but maybe I don't want the second cube to affect the distance shader. So what can we do? Well, we can create a trace set for the cube. So right click the cube, go to extensions, symbol 4D tags, on parameters, and then create a trace set, call that cube, then go back to the distance shader and under the trace set use the same cube name. So now the, this cube is being emitted, or maybe you want the opposite, so we can create an inclusive trace set. Other cube isn't included because it doesn't have a cube trace set. Okay, so that's how to use the distance shader in C4D2A. Thanks for watching and bye for now.